All right, welcome everyone to uh, the uh, Steve's Vintage Moto Builds Channel 2023 Wrap Up and Stash Review. Um, going to do a few different things today. Uh, today's uh, today's um, uh, video. There's going to be three videos all together, uh, maybe four, uh, but I'll try to keep it to three. And today's uh, are going to be the aircraft. Aircraft that are in my stash and the aircraft that I've built so far. I, I only really uh, picked up the hobby again in July of 2023. So I, I think I've done pretty well overall. Uh, especially loading up the stash. <laughs> we all know that's the easy part. Uh, many thanks to all my subscribers and all my viewers, uh, whether they stop in for a couple minutes or watch the whole video. Uh, special thanks to Zinzan Scale Modeling, uh, Matt at Model Minutes, and um, also um, Peter Oxley, uh, who does great kit reviews, and um, he's been very good about welcoming me into uh, the uh, the Peter Oxley. Uh, community. Uh, he has quite a few for the subscribers and oh and so congratulations to Zinzan Scale Modeling. Uh, just recently hit 900 subscribers and well deserved. Um, I've mentioned him before on the channel. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check out his channel um, by all means stop by. Uh, he does great work, makes beautiful models and he's a real detail guy. So if you're into that kind of stuff uh, that's great. Peter Oxley does mostly kit reviews. Zinzan mostly does kit builds. So um, all of the, both of those uh, give you a lot of information. And Matt at Model Minutes, uh, he's, uh, he's also giving me some great ideas. And uh, also lately he's been doing some great little dioramas. Uh, he, he builds, builds, builds the, the, the little ones and puts them on Ikea coasters. <laughs> So, uh, you know, check out his channel as well. Uh, another mention is uh, Hobby Barn. Terry at Hobby Barn, I've mentioned uh, just recently. A uh, friend of Zinzan's. Uh, he's an American guy. Uh, him and his uh, compadres. Uh, they focus on uh, muscle cars, funny cars, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you like that kind of thing, check out his channel, The Hobby Barn. Uh, he's got lots of great stuff there. Uh, Terry hasn't been well. Uh, we're all pulling for him, hoping that he uh, he uh, he gets better soon. Uh, good news, he got home from the hospital the other day uh, after being in again. So um, hopefully, uh, you know, he'll be able to to enjoy things again. Uh, he did a nice uh, a nice uh, uh, live stream uh, with. Uh, uh, five, uh, I guess it was five guests, five video guests, and uh, it was it was a very nice evening and a lot of ideas exchanged and so forth. So uh, check out Terry's Terry's channel up uh, Hobby Barn. Um, if you're if you're really into scenery, uh, Mark Lynn, uh, uh, um, Martin uh, at Mark Lynn of Sweden. Uh, he's great uh, on all kinds of different kinds of scenery if you're doing uh, dioramas or stuff like that. Okay, so enough of that. Uh, here we are. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to going to show off uh, the 2023 aircraft builds and uh, some just brief after kit after build reviews. Uh, we start off with my prime joy, the uh, Tamiya 148. Uh, Spitfire Mark 1 and as far as after build review is concerned uh, if you watch the channel you know I love Tamiya um, but uh, this one I'm afraid I'm only going to be able to give it a fair to good um, I'm not the only one who had problems with it Peter Oxley who's a, that's about as close to a master uh, model maker as you can get without actually being one in my books he is but he doesn't consider himself so uh, he had trouble with this kit too so uh, there were a couple problems with it um, I had a terrible time with the cockpit um, 
It was it was way more complicated than it needed to be, in my opinion. He felt uh, Peter Ox had felt the same way, and also uh, they dropped the ball on the instructions. Uh, uh, towards the, they included a, a beautiful gla glossy uh, insert for painting and decaling, but it was only for half of the decals. <laughs> Uh, the other half you had to get from the black and white instructions and they had you bouncing back and forth from one to the other and back and forth so uh, that was kind of irritating uh, to be honest and uh, this was the 2018 version and I've actually been hearing some rumblings out in the community that uh, the newer Tamiya stuff uh, they're dropping the ball a little bit um, which is unusual for them, uh, but uh, uh, things just seem to be a little bit off. Um, but as I've always said, you know, you can always count on their older kits. Uh, I can't think of an older kit of theirs that I, I ever tried to build and it was uh, had problems with it. They usually go together beautifully, they fit together beautifully. Oh, speaking of which, for this one, the fuselage uh, it didn't go together very well either. And I doubt that was on me. Um, I puttied it up and so forth, but anyways. So, um, there was some nice photo etch included, but a lot of the photo etch, by the time you put it in, even with the canopy open, you can't see it. So, uh, I don't like that kind of thing very much. <laughs> if you're going to go over and above, let's, you know, let's uh, try to make sure you can see it. Okay, so yeah, so that was the Spitfire. Here we are. Um, this is hand painted. Um, I think I did a pretty nice job on it. And I got the uh, the ICM uh, ground crew and pilots. And instead of putting the pilot in, I put him climbing up into the Tamiya uh, Tilly light utility vehicle. That was a 148 scale kit too. Um, it was a nice little kit. A um, couple weird things about it. Uh, the instructions were fine. Everything was good there. Fit was good. Excuse me. Uh, except for um, two things. Uh, of course, being a British light utility vehicle, it uh, should have been right-hand drive, but they had it set up for left-hand drive, uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, but it didn't really matter after all because uh, you can't really see uh, in into the uh, the dashboard anyways and I couldn't get the dashboard to go in properly I tried everything it just uh, it just wouldn't go so uh, eh, I left it out <laughs> um, just like jigsaw puzzles if you find them frustrating I found them frustrating doctor said don't do jigsaw puzzles so um, you know, if, if, if you want to fight it and go wild on it, uh, that's up to you. Me, yeah, I'm not that picky. Um, the ICM figures were, were really nice. Got the table here uh, with the, uh, the ammo belt loader and uh, a ladder. There were a couple other things in it, but um, I, uh, I chose not to use them. Uh, so we got the little dog, guy kneeling, talking to the dog. Uh, the lady RAF officer um, talking to the uh, the driver in the truck, pilot getting on there. This is my uh, first diorama in uh, 45 odd years, and uh, my first ever attempt at flocking uh, with the um, with the static glass. But anyways, overall, I'm very pleased with how it turned out, and. Uh, Um, I didn't have as much trouble painting the figures as I expected. Um, I was really quite intimidated by figures. I never did them much when I was when I was younger. Um, but you know, I, I'm enjoying them. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ever get to the point of doing just figures. Uh, but I, I certainly won't be afraid or intimidated um, uh, by by painting them up. And especially since I, I now got the extra super fine brushes. Um, the, the only thing I wasn't pleased with was the flesh tone, um, and uh, I've got new flesh tone paint, and uh, I think the one I had was Vallejo, 
nothing wrong with it. It was just too light, uh, I thought. Um, I, I mixed it with a bit of brown, uh, tried a bit of red, uh, but it still came out too light. So, but anyways, uh, that's that's that. So, there we go. Very pleased with that. You've probably seen that before. Um, I, I've, I've showed it a couple times. Like I said, I'm very proud of it. Okay, so uh, next on the agenda, a failure. Uh, not the Fairchild. The Fairchild has been banished forever. And uh, may its name be never mentioned again. Uh, you can watch the video if you want. Uh, it actually got more. <laughs> I titled it the worst kit I ever tried to build and uh, It got more more views than uh, by by literally thousands um, I think the last time I checked there were you know, it was almost 4,000 views um, So you, you can check that out. I'll put cars up for all of this stuff. So Okay, so uh, the first uh, first couple kits I built um, I had actually got at uh, my local hobby shop, NRC Hobbies, from the, the bargain bin. Uh, Matt had uh, picked them up at uh, an estate sale. And uh, they, there were a few of them. Uh, a couple for $4.99, a couple more for $9.99. And uh, one was $14.99, but I talked them down to $9.99. <laughs> So, okay, so uh, this first one, uh, as I said, it was a failure. Uh, and this was the first first uh, little aircraft model kit, again, that I had uh, tried to build in 45 years. This was an Italeri um, Focke Wolf 190. And it's, it, it, it's an old kit. Um, I, I think it was from 83 anyways it was back from when uh, they were they, they had the extra E in their name so uh, fit wasn't that great um, uh, it, it was pretty basic kit um, nothing special about the the detail or anything um, but uh, you know like uh, I couldn't get the cockpit to fit in properly and or sorry the the control panel and uh, but anyway so uh, it's kind of half built and I, I think it's going to go into a crash diorama so um, you know I, I could have soldiered on and finished it but really uh, for $4.99 uh, and all the extra work it was going to take I uh, I just set it aside so uh, that'll probably be airbrush practice <laughs> there we go so, uh, next, was the Douglas Dauntless uh, SBD. Uh, SBD, SDB, SBD, silent but deadly. <laughs> So uh, the, uh, the the dive bomber. Uh, this was a tester's kit, uh, and it, it was nice, uh, uh, really nice. I, uh, this was back from I think, oh my goodness, I think this one was from back in the '60s, and uh, it was a nice little kit. Went together nicely. Again, uh, I painted it by hand. Uh, the decals were old, but. Uh, they went on okay. Um, so once again, not perfect, but there you go. Not bad for the second effort. I didn't build these all in a row. The first uh, three I did. Um, the next one was the Matchbox. 172 Mosquito. And uh, this was from 1983. Uh, went together beautifully. Went together perfectly, as you'd expect from a Matchbox kit. 
Uh, the decals were old, but I managed to make them work. Uh, again, hand painted. And very pleased with that effort as well. Uh, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, that was a nice little build. And I, I, I did kind of video on this uh, from start to finish if you'd never built a model before. So I'll, I'll put a card up on that. I started out with basic tools you're going to need, basic techniques, and then just took it step by step from there. So, um, yeah, nice little kit. Um, as you know, Matchbox, they're long gone. Uh, so if you do see a Matchbox kit, uh, number one, you'll, you'll never go wrong with one. They're all great little kits. They go together beautifully. Lovely molding, hardly any flash or any problems like that. Uh, so yeah, if you run across them, uh, scoop them up. Uh, a lot of people collect them still. Uh, and people like Peter Oxley will 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 pay handsomely if they have a chance <laughs> to get one. Uh, he's got a ridiculous amount of uh, Matchbox. He's got so many Matchbox kits he has to put them in in cartons. Um, but uh, I sent him a Wellington one set, or not Wellington, uh, Wellesley. Uh, again, I came across the Wellesley bomber in the in the bargain bin at the store, and uh, it was still in the original cellophane. Cellophane. Uh, the box was a bit shrunken and faded on the front, but on the back it looked perfect. Uh, he, I sent it to him. I sent it to him over in the UK uh, as a gift. Um, uh, he, I, I had got so many hours of, of enjoyment and learned so much from his uh, from his videos uh, that I thought that, that I thought he'd like it, and uh, it was I think it was a '78, and it was an original Lesney Matchbox kit. Um, so, anyways, he he was very pleased to receive it, and um, he felt it was too nice to build. So uh, I wish he would build it. But he had another one, I think, that he's that he's built. It was a later one uh, from when the Chinese were were uh, doing the Matchbox stuff. But in any case, yeah. So uh, very pleased with that. And underway is the little Premium Hobbies Zero, and it's a nice little kit. I just got this started, and I'm going to be doing this as a step-by-step -step build. Um, got engine parts here that I painted up, ready to go. See, I painted on the, the copper wires for the magnetos. And so, yeah, working on that. So on the Dauntless, uh, yeah, I'm going to mark that. That's good. That's good. Um, you know, uh, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, the instructions were very basic, but uh, they included a beautiful um, uh, schematic diagram, uh, a draftsman quality schematic diagram of the aircraft, um, which was very interesting. So uh, that was the Tester's Hawk series, and I think that was 1964. Five, um, but anyway, stood the test of time, and like I said, uh, you know the decals they were worn, uh, but they went on okay. So yeah, five bucks. Huh. There you go. Okay, and today I just got finished with the Academy Mirage Three C. A 1967 Israeli Air Force version. Uh, this is the one that took place in the 19. It, it, it was uh, used in the uh, uh, the 1967 war. And when I did the kit review, uh, I had mentioned that uh, I thought it was the Mirage that had shot. It was like two two Mirages or three Mirages that. Uh, Shot down like 20 MIGs, 20 Egyptian MIGs, um, in the same dogfight. And, um, but it wasn't Mirage, it was F-4s. So, 
but I don't I don't think it would have mattered because the, uh, the Israelis are so good it, it doesn't matter what they fly uh, they can't afford to screw up <laughs> so there you go so um, the kit itself uh, it was okay um, you know it, it wasn't an expensive kit so I think it was 25 bucks something like that maybe 28 um, the instructions yay instructions not great uh, the, the, the part numbers are really tiny they could make those a little bigger uh, there was no service history notes pilot looked like he was getting stretched down to spaghetti through a black hole. Uh, his legs were like spaghetti and his feet were like clown feet. Excuse me, so he wasn't used. Uh, they said it had a highly detailed cockpit, but it didn't. Not in my opinion, anyways. It was uh, a very basic. Um, I, I put the, the canopy on. There was no canopy off or can be open option. I suppose I, I could have done something with it, but anyways, and so yeah, I painted up the control panel a bit, and yeah, so that's what we got. Um, on the decals, uh, the stars are offset in the circles. Uh, they're not, um, they're not centered, and the decals were kind of difficult to work with. Um, Unless you get them on flat right off the bat, uh, they're going to curl up on you and curl under, and uh, it's kind of a mess trying to get them to to straighten out. So uh, again, uh, overall though, uh, it was uh, again fair to good. I'd say it's a fair to good kit, um, and uh, it went together very easily. And yeah, no complaints as far as that goes. Uh, detail at the back, not great. Uh, I put a piece of cardboard in there and painted it. Uh, it looks like what it looks like, whatever. And, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, again, uh, not a bad little kit. Um, uh, certainly not disappointed for the, the money that I paid. So, there we go. Okay, so the next 148 kit, as you can see, it's uh, construction is underway, and I am struggling with it a little bit. Um, it's an ICM kit. Set that aside. Uh, the BF 109 F-2 with German pilots and ground personnel. I did a review on this. Uh, the, the aircraft itself is an older tooling, older molding, uh, and the figures are newer. They, they do combo kits. Uh, the figures look great. And, uh, but, uh, he, um, yeah, this was, uh, quite a ways back. I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure what year exactly. tooling was done at. Um, uh, not, uh, not unbuildable by any means um, and I have a lot to learn so um, but uh, it seemed to me that the the engine and how it fits into the cockpit is is a little funky. Uh, but I'll get through it and that'll be up for another diorama and uh, yeah the ICM figures they're just they're fabulous I mean um, you know, if you're going to get figures, go with Tamiya or ICM. Uh, and, oh, and in fairness to ICM, this is an older, like I said, it's an older tooling, uh, older molds. Uh, but they've, they've really upped their game uh, in the last little while. And uh, they've, uh, they've come out with some fantastic kits. Uh, Peter Oxley, uh, um, they uh, unsolicited. Uh, they reached out to Peter Oxley and asked him to uh, to review review their kits for them for us. And so uh, Peter Peter reviews quite a few of them. He's a very fair reviewer, very thorough, um, and uh, and he's not a snob. 
you know, he'll 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 review uh, you know ICM kits, Wingnut Wings kits, uh, Meng, Kinetic, Academy. Um, you know, he he's just you know he you know he's fair and he's not a hobby snobby. So um, and uh, uh, his philosophy is uh, that it doesn't matter so much what other people think. Uh, first of all. Um, uh, I found, Zinzan's found, uh, and others I'm sure, uh, we think it's not that great what we do. Uh, and then somebody comes over for dinner or whatever the case may be, and they're like, oh, that's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, you know, the, the Spitfire diorama, Matt, at the hobby shop, he was very impressed with that. Uh, I showed, first showed him the picture, he flipped his glasses down, and he, oh, wow, he said. So, yeah, it's, it's always nice to get validation. But the important thing is to have fun, uh, learn as you go, and uh, you know be proud. Be proud of the end result. I mean, everybody's going to make mistakes. We're going to screw up. Uh, we're going to make a mess of some kits. Um, but uh, for the most part, I expect you know we'll uh, we'll be pretty happy with what we end up with, unless you're like a complete total perfectionist, and then you have you know your own problems. So, uh, anyways. And, uh, yeah, uh, one thing I love about ICM, uh, this is how they do all their packaging. They have a, they have a cover, just a, a light uh, cardboard cover. And then they have this really nice, uh, sturdy top opening, top opening box. Virtually indestructible. So, uh, a lot of other manufacturers could, uh, could learn from them. It's amazing too. Uh, they're a Ukrainian manufacturer, and uh, they're still managing to keep going and, and uh, turn out some excellent kits. So definitely check out ICM if you have a chance. Okay, we're nearly finished up with the 148s here. I don't have a lot of them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get more. <laughs> um, the, the 148s are much easier for me than, than the 172s. The 172s are a bit small. So uh, here we have a couple of uh, true vintage Tamiya kits. The North American P51D Mustang, 8th Air Force version. Uh, uh, when you hear 8th Air Force, uh, most people think about... Uh, uh, the uh, the bomber command, um, and until 1943, uh, it was the uh, the 8th USAF USAAF uh, US Army Air Force, and it was split into a bomber command and a fighter command. Uh, after 1940, in late 1943, uh, I think. No, actually, it was in early 1943. In early 1943, um, the 8th, uh, 9th, uh, uh, and 12th, uh, the 8th and 9th were based in, uh, in the UK. Uh, the 12th was based in Italy after 1943. And so they became, uh, they, everything was reorganized, and the... Uh, 8th bomber, 8th uh, USAAF bomber command and a USAAF fighter command were merged and became the 8th Air Force, the 9th Air Force, and the 12th Air Force. And uh, they had a unified command uh, 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 to coordinate both fighters and bombers. So uh, a little trivia there because it can be a bit, a little bit confusing, you know. It's like hmm, I thought Eighth Air Force was bombers, and it, uh, well, it, yeah, it was. But you, you, that's that's who you heard about the most. Nobody hardly, you know, who hears about the Ninth Air Force. Don't know what happened. I don't know why the Eighth Air Force got so famous, but uh, maybe it was because of the movie and the TV show. I don't know. Um, but uh, I don't know much about the Ninth. But I'm sure they made just as much a contribution. Uh, as the 8th did uh, over Europe, uh, over Western Europe, and uh, the 12th Air Force in Italy. Um, so, yeah, so uh, it's a nice little kit. Um, not too complicated. 
nice little cockpit, uh, various different schemes, so hard to go wrong if, if you pick up that kit. Again, very reasonably priced. It's pretty rare, we'll, uh, we're all uh, about between 50 and 60 dollars is about my limit. It, it has to be something kind of special if I'm going to get uh, uh, something cost more than that. So, lots of people review and do expensive kits. Um, I'm 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 a, I'm a lower end guy, <laughs> and so um, anyways, yeah, it's uh, uh, especially these days, you know. Uh, uh, you know, there's not a lot of extra disposable income, uh, no matter what your age might be. And so, uh, uh, looking at my channel analytics, it's guys like me. It's the, you know, mostly the 45 to 65 plus group. And, um, you know, money's, money's tight for us too sometimes. So, um, you can still get a lot of enjoyment out of these kits. Uh, you, you, you know, invest... Uh, uh, you know, maybe fifty or or a hundred dollars in in paints and cement and and tools, and you're good to go for quite a while. And you get hours and hours and hours out of for not very much money. Uh, the next is the uh, the Volt F4U-1A Corsair. Uh, I've seen a lot of reviews and builds on the on the D version, uh, but this is the 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 uh, the one A version, and you can do it wings down or wings up. And uh, has a funny little bomb crater, uh, uh, cradle there. Um, and again, nice little kit. Not too complicated. And uh, uh, that'll, uh, that'll build up nice. Nice box art too. Human painted. Always like that. Okay, so now we get into the 172s, and uh, one uh, extra special kit. Uh, <laughs> I picked this up for $12.95 off Amazon. $12.95 uh, plus four bucks shipping, $17. Uh, just a little sop with camel. Nothing, uh, nothing special. Just because I wanted a soft with camel. It's just a tiny little kit. Two sprues, decals, basic instructions. Like I said, just because I wanted a soft with camel. <laughs> and uh, most of these kits I've done reviews on, uh, except for the ones that are sealed in plastic. I'll do reviews on those uh, when I crack them open to build them. Speaking of which. Got three here from Academy, and uh, hoping they're a, a little better than the Mirage, but you know, I won't be upset if they aren't. Uh, again, very reasonably priced, around twenty twenty-five dollars. Uh, I usually try to get uh, free uh, Amazon Prime shipping. So we've got the Hawker Tempest Five. Um, 172 scale. Got that there. This was late in the war. Nice uh, nice picture of the painted model there. More there. Uh, which is nice because, like I said, uh, Academy doesn't give you painting instructions. <laughs> And next is the JU87G-1 Stuka, the Tank Buster. Um, again, I haven't opened this one yet, uh, but uh, you know, a couple buddies out there, as well as some other videos I've watched, looks to be a pretty nice kit. Goes together all right. Um, I expect the issue is probably going to be the decals for Academy, um, but uh, you know, just learning to be super extra careful. And you know, make make sure you just slide them on straight to start with, because if you if you if you bend them or tuck them under, uh, you forget it. Uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. 
you're done. Um, and don't leave them in the water too long. They are literally 15 seconds is all they need. Uh, too much longer and they all curl up on themselves and yeah, it's a, it's a horror. Okay, so yeah, so there's that. And uh, this is the last Academy kit, I think. Excuse me. And uh, kind of something a little different. It's the uh, the OV dash ten A Vietnam War Bronco, uh, and it comes with decals for uh, the USAF or uh, the United States Marine Corps. Hoorah, go Marines! Okay, uh, yeah. So uh, that's an interesting uh, in interesting subject. Something a little different. I've watched a couple builds on that. And it uh, looks like a pretty good kit. So I'll look forward to building that in the new year as well. Okay, what's next? <coughs> Excuse me. as well go with this, another Tamiya kit. Again, uh, this one's been uh, wrapped in plastic. Uh, 18 dollars at my local hobby store. Uh, you know, plus tax. This is Canada. And uh, looks like a nice little kit. Again, I've seen some builds. It was an interesting little aircraft. Uh, and uh, one of the first uh, purpose designed uh, to uh, take off and land on, uh, f uh, from and to on an aircraft carrier. Um, as you can see, Delta winged, pretty cool. So uh, we'll have more on that when we do the review. It looks like there's some nice detail here. Uh, the jet cone uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, I expect that uh, That'll be up to Tamiya's uh, usual, very high standard. Okay, next is uh, a little different duck here. Uh, we've got the Novo 172 Black Widow Heavy Night Fighter. And... If you can see here, we'll bring it up. Made in USSR. Back in the USSR, babe. Anyways, this was actually originally a frog kit, um, and uh, Frog was 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 a manufacturer, a contemporary of Matchbox. Uh, yeah, about the. You know, about, about the same uh, price level and so forth, although uh, frogs were maybe a little cheaper. And uh, like all, the, all these kits were built for kids just to, to build and put them on their shelf. Uh, anyway, so this was from 1977, at the height of the Cold War. How in the world they got a hold of frog molds uh, at the height of the Cold War in the Soviet Union, I do not know. But they did. Fancy that. Um, nice box art, awesome aircraft, great subject. Uh, this was nine ninety nine at my local uh, bargain bins uh, at the hobby store. And <laughs> inside, it was just a mess. It, it had been it had been opened. It looked like somebody had started to maybe try to build it. Um, Parts were off the sprue and so on and so forth, uh, but Matt and I went through it, and uh, everything's there. So uh, we'll see how that goes when the time comes to build it. I mean, this and the and the uh, the P thirty eight thirty eight is that it? I'm sure somebody out there will correct me if I'm wrong. The, the uh, P thirty eight Lightning. Uh, This was a this was a Northrop aircraft. Uh, the P thirty eight I think was uh, Lockheed Martin uh, or Lockheed. 
yeah, was Lockheed before they merged with Martin. Uh, again, uh, hand painted, signed, uh, and nice depiction. Not much as far as paint goes for this one. It was mostly black. Yeah, so um, I'm going to look forward to building that. And another one we've seen on the channel. I, I did a review on this, the FA-18D Hornet. Uh, this is the USMC version. Hoorah, go Marines. And uh, very nice kit. Get a lovely profile view there of the completed model. A little blistering here, but yeah. Uh, you get plenty of sprues, lots of parts, and uh, I had a look through. Everything looks good, and uh, I'll look forward to that one. Uh, just like when I was a younger modeler, I, I kind of stayed away from the more modern aircraft, the jet aircraft. Um, they're beautiful in so many ways, um, but, you know, they're kind of just basic. <laughs> um, so, but anyways, um, you know, now that I've, I, you know, I've done the Mirage and, um, yeah, falling in love with them again. So, uh, that'll be a nice one. Yeah, 172, but <laughs> they're big aircraft, my goodness, uh, compared to Spitfires and Tempests and Hurricanes and stuff like that. Uh, it's amazing you know in you know just uh, just a few short decades how far we've come and I'm gonna talk with talk a bit about that too uh, before we finish here today okay so we're down to the final four and uh, Yeah, four. Final three 172 kits, and then the one special kit. And I did a review on this one. I I, I picked this out again. This was a bargain bin kit. Uh, this one was like nine ninety nine, I think. Uh, the Type ninety seven carrier attack bomber, the Kate Nakajima B five N. And uh, this kit was uh, manufactured by a, a company called Mania, uh, uh, Mania Hobbies, out of Japan. Uh, they only made, I think, five or six different kits, maybe a couple more. Uh, but I, I think there were only five uh, 172 kits that they did. And then they were they were absorbed by Hasegawa. I think Hasegawa still um, still markets these kits. And uh, this is my favorite. I mean, uh, and and I'll I'll tell you why. Um, I'm 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 almost sorry that I I broke the plastic on this. Um, because uh, the box is in perfect condition. I mean, look at the colors. They're, they're just, it's just beautiful. And, uh, but, uh, I did it. I reviewed it. Again, I'll put up the, the card for it. And, um, you know, since then, I, I just have to keep telling myself, you know, I'm an assembler, not a collector. I'm an assembler, not a collector. So, um, uh, not that this would be any great value now. I think I have seen them online for 30, 40 bucks US. But um, here's the reason that I love it. Uh, there's more than one reason. Look at that instruction booklet. High gloss. There, 
the instructions are all in Japanese, but everything's so simple to put to, you know, it's just so simple. Step by step by step. Uh, there's no sprue map, uh, but they do give you a complete parts inventory here and how it all goes together and where it goes. So, a very, a very cool. Uh, they've even given you hole punches for a two ring binder. Um, I don't do it. I just keep my instructions in a separate box when I'm done. But uh, a lot of people do. And then, yeah, look at that beautiful paint scheme. And this was, uh, let me take a look. Got it written down here somewhere. Well, I guess I haven't got it written down. It was sometime in the 70s. Um, you, can, you can look it up. Mania Hobbies. Nakajima K. Um, so we've got that. The other reason I love this kit. You get two aircraft. One in silver, one in gray. Now, the decals have uh, certainly seen better days, and I probably won't use them, uh, because for the Premium Hobby Zero, I got a bunch of extra decals that are brand new, and uh, these ones didn't have a lot of decals. Uh, you know, they've got the, uh, the Rising Sun, uh, and uh, I think uh, a lot of the rest I can uh, paint by hand. But I'll try them first, see how they go. If they, uh, if they won't go on, then uh, I'll use the premium hobby ones. Because we've got lots of extras there, even for a very inexpensive kit. So, uh, yeah, that's my baby. I just love that. Uh, uh, I mean, so awesome that you get you get two aircraft, uh, one one in silver, one in gray, and again, uh, you know, these were uh, this was for the Japanese market, but they were designed to be put together and put on the shelf, or you know, go play dive bomber uh, as soon as you're done. But uh, yeah, beautiful work there. I wish we I wish we had this now. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> So much in the world is deteriorated. Uh, it would be nice if uh, things like this could be done uh, this way still or again. Anyways, I digress. Uh, next is my birthday present from my wife. Uh, 172 scale again, CH-47A Chinook, and uh, it's from Trumpeter. Uh, uh, Matt sold a tour for $29.99, and uh, when, I, when I opened it for my birthday and I saw Trumpeter, my heart kind of sank. Um, I've generally avoided uh, the Chinese kits. Um, some of them are awesome, I think, I've heard, sort of. Uh, I've also heard a lot of problems with their instructions. And, um, and uh, some of the problems with quality, especially companies like Hobby Boss and uh, some of the lower end ones. Something I learned recently about Meng. Uh, somehow or other, they ended up uh, with, you know, I have my own theory on it, which I'll keep to myself. Uh, somehow or other, they ended up with uh, a bunch of the wing nut wings molds. So uh, whether they bought them at fire sale prices or or what, I don't know. Um, but in any case, uh, I opened this up. I've done a review on it. Again, I'll put up the card. Uh, but 
it's a beautiful kit. Uh, I looked through the instructions, everything looks fine. Uh, the pieces are, are nicely detailed. Um, the uh, the rotors here um, they're pre-molded to sag uh, as if it's on the ground and uh, Nice separation for the fuselage parts, nice detail, nice decals. Everything looks fabulous. Um, so uh, that's going to be uh, sooner rather than later in the new year. Uh, the only thing I'm a bit disappointed about is uh, they've only got Army and Air Force decals. And uh, here I go again, Marines, hoorah. So I, I'm gonna see if I can scare up uh, some decals that'll work uh, for uh, the Marine version. Not that I got anything against the Army. And uh, very nice. Oh, and a bit of trivia for people who aren't Canadian. The uh, Chinook is, uh, is a, a native word, First Nations, Indigenous people, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, and it, it means warm wind. And the Chinook is a warm wind that comes down the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains uh, in Canada. Um, mostly, mostly hits Calgary, uh, and it comes, comes in, uh, in, uh, mid to late winter, and it's a very welcome thaw, because winter there, uh, it often gets below, uh, below minus 40, uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit, same thing, uh, darn cold, and, uh, there is nothing, uh, between, there's nothing stopping the wind from uh, the north, from the North Pole, all the way down through Edmonton and down through Calgary. Uh, the, uh, it gets funneled right down beside the Rocky Mountains there. So uh, it's a very welcome event when the, uh, when the Chinook uh, does arrive. And as I'm sure it was for, <laughs> for, for U.S. soldiers in the Vietnam War. Uh, oh, another little bit of trivia about this aircraft. It's still flying today. It's a workhorse. Uh, it's been around forever. And uh, year after year, they keep increasing its payload and power. Uh, and it also floats. If, if you look at the design, it floats. They can land it on the water. Uh, whether it's to deploy Navy SEALs, or uh, do uh, naval rescue, whatever the case may be. Uh, uh, they can set her down on the water and it floats. So an awesome piece of engineering. Okay, so we're rounding the clubhouse turn and uh, into the home stretch. Uh, I just reviewed this the other day just came the other day and we've got the Ravel eh. yes Ravel um, not all horrible Ravel uh, but Ravel does have its challenges especially when it comes to fit uh, but in any case uh, I, I, I went during the review I test fitted this and yeah, it's okay not bad needs a little work but uh, that can be said for other kits too uh, putting the fuselage together anyways beautiful aircraft uh, where is it there the flying needle 
went over Mach 3 officially. Uh, I personally think it was probably closer to Mach 4, knowing the way the U.S. Air Force works. And um, as I said in the review, although it was a, a, it's been uh, quote unquote officially retired, uh, I have a contact at Lockheed Martin as well as a nephew who uh, uh, works uh, with the, uh, he's a nuclear engineer, works with the United States government, rotates his time between Fermilab, Los Alamos, uh, Livermore Lab, a couple other places I can't mention. And uh, there are still a couple that are operationally serviceable. And they are used uh, for very specific missions from time to time. But shh, don't tell anybody that, okay? <laughs> Good thing nobody watches my channel or hardly anybody. You know, we, we, we don't want the Russians or the Chinese to find out about that. Ah. Anyways, um, sorry guys, but yeah, you're not our friends. Anyways, so uh, yeah, it, w it was nice. I, w I was a bit disappointed. It, it looked like somebody kicked it uh, when they, uh, you know, I mean, it, they, they, it, it punched right through one of the, one of the nozzle cones here, punched right through here. And uh, it was just in a flimsy, just very basic plastic envelope. So I was very disappointed. I let Amazon know about that, and uh, they actually gave me a bit of a refund. They gave me 20% refund. So, um, yeah, so that was nice. Okay, so uh, we're coming up to an hour here. And we have the pièce de résistance, that was my French, uh, and again, it's another Ravel kit. It's a 144 scale, uh, 50th anniversary, 1969 to 2019, moon landing version. And it's got 82 parts, and it's nearly 80, 80 centimeters tall. I don't know how many inches that is, but, you know, it's tall. Huh. So, uh, we've gone from the sop with camel all the way up to this. I did a review on it. I'm just going to pull it out so you can see it. Uh, Peter Oxley warned me about this. I mentioned it, that I, I had ordered it. It was on its way. Oh, but Peter didn't get the 50th anniversary version. He got the, he got the usual standard disappointing Ravel version, uh, where this section was actually just uh, flimsy, flimsy plastic that you, you know, you literally curled it around and yeah, yeah very sad but that so uh, yeah um, but this is all regular styling plastic it's in white and silver comes with some figures it's got a stand and so Again, uh, I, I, I've uh, watched a few builds on this, and uh, uh, yeah, th that'll be a, that'll be a project. Uh, uh, it's going to take a while um, to get her all painted up right. Uh, it also comes with the uh, uh, the the command module and uh, uh, the lunar landing module, the uh, lunar excursion module. The lem, and uh, it's all built together, and you can all you can put it all together, or you can uh, just 
display it separately. I think I'm going to stand it up in an appropriate corner. Whoops. And when I, you know, when I, when, you know, when I get to that point, it's going to be kind of like, you know, from the Sopwith camel all the way up to. the Apollo 11 moon landing. Oh, yeah, and uh, speaking of which, just this last week, we uh, we passed the uh, uh, the anniversary of the last uh, moon mission, Apollo 17. Uh, we lost uh, Eugene Cernan this year, who was the last man to walk on the moon. And... Uh, uh, I, I don't make a lot of comments on things um, uh, that, that might even be vaguely political, <laughs> which is hard these days. Uh, but two things. Uh, first of all, um, it happened. If you think it didn't happen, well, get over it, okay? It happened. Uh, too much went into it. Too much technology came out of it that we still use today for it not to have happened. And the second thing is, uh, it, it, to me, it's uh, inarguably uh, the, the greatest achievement of humankind ever. Um, to, uh, to, leave, to leave this little earth and to go and land and walk on our satellite and survive and come back alive. Uh, uh, the only way to put it is an extraordinary achievement. And it was done not only once, it was done multiple times. Each time advancing our knowledge and uh, you know everything from the Hubble telescope uh, to, the, to the, uh, the deep space radio field, everything. Uh, the James Webb telescope, everything. Everything came from that. And most of it was from slide rules. Computers back then were mostly used just to crunch numbers. But all the design, everything, uh, uh, that was done hands-on. Uh, people on uh, uh, draftsmen on draftsmen sports. Engineers, scientists with slide rules. And uh, again, it's uh, an, uh, the most extraordinary achievement humanity, I think, uh, will ever accomplish. Because um, <laughs> we're sure not going very forward these days. Uh, even though everybody talks about Mars and everything, that's, uh, that's fine. But we wouldn't be able to go there uh, without the, uh, uh, the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions. So uh, that's it for now. Um, little over an hour, uh, but I hope everyone's enjoyed it, and uh, there'll be uh, there'll be other videos. It, like I said, it's, it's a three-part series. Uh, there'll be uh, ships, uh, small ships, and larger ships, and then uh, lastly, or well, I'm, I'm not sure what order things are going to go in, but then there'll be uh, ground vehicles and so forth. So. Thanks for joining me, and I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll uh, join me uh, for the next one. Thanks again. Stay safe, and have a good night.